My name is Owen O'Cleary, I'm a Quality Assurance Architect at CA Technologies and I'm here to talk to you today about demystifying package ship scripts. To see how package ship works we need to start at the beginning and consider how Endeavour processes your elements in the first place. When you add elements into Endeavour they get generated using a generate processor. This will automate the processes like compile and linking and optionally maybe a bind or kicks new copy. When we move to the next stage in the life cycle, typically we'll use the almost exactly the same processor. It could be a generate, again, compile, a new copy. However, when we go to move to production, at this stage we're grouping changes together into packages. The packages may use the processor, but this time we're more likely to do a copy process. Um, but again, we may still need to do binds and kicks new copies, again, as needed. So when we want to do a ship, Typically what we're doing is defining the mapping rules which define the host and remote data set names that we're interested in. We identify, for example, the DBRM libraries, the load libraries that need to be copied. We call these the outputs. To ship the outputs, Endeavor uses the package details to find all the files that have been modified in your package and collects those using and then ships them using whatever transmission method you use at your location. Once the outputs arrive the, at the destination, we need to unpack them, stage them, and then copy them into the remote location. So hopefully that explains what happens when we do a regular ship. Let's look now at what happens when we want to add the scripts into the process. Well, the first thing is we need to modify the process that Bills are currently doing our, our bind and new copy to insert steps where we will save the script or the syntax used to do these. Then we update our mapping rules to identify these script files, but this time, instead of a remote name, we're going to give it the special symbol script file. This identifies the scripts, which can then be packaged and shipped alongside your objects. At the remote destination, once again, we do the staging of the, the libraries, but now we have the process where you can do before action scripts, which might be a DB2 bind, and after action scripts, which could be a new copy. I hope this has helped demystify package ship scripts for you. If you've got more questions or want to find out more, please check out the new package ship scenario guide. Or just give it a go. But please do let me know what happens. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks for watching.